Hey there, it's Joe Glines from The Automator, and in this video, we're going to have Isaiah show you how to create hot strings. Think of it as like text expansion, right? You type something small, and then bam, you have the text that you want. Uh, in AutoHotKey, they're very simple to use. It was the first AutoHotKey course that I ever did because they're the hidden gems of AutoHotKey. They're so useful. We should be using them all the time. Uh, this video is actually an extract from our Intro to AutoHotKey in V2 course. Um, I'm going to put a link up here. If you're interested in buying it, we'll give you 20% off if you click this link. Check it out. It's around four hours long, this video. Most of the videos are, are three to five minutes long. I think this one's a little bit longer than that. But hot strings are a phenomenal way to save time and to standardize the text that you're putting in somewhere, you know, when you have it or it's repeated. So I use them a lot. I have hundreds and hundreds upon them. So um, give it a try. Uh, if you're interested, take a look at the course. As I said, the, um, the courses, by the way, come with a double your money back guarantee. So you have nothing to lose. If you pay, um, let's say, $50 for the course, um, we would pay you $100 if you said, no, I it, I didn't think it was good quality, right? So within the th first 30 days, you're eligible for a double your money back guarantee because our courses are really well put together and, and we have a lot of faith that you will see that value. Um, and you're going to start working smarter, not harder. So check it out. I hope you enjoy it. Cheers. One of the most interesting things that you can do without a hot key is creating text expansions or how we know them hot strings. Now, what they are is that you just create a small trigger, a few letters or a word that once you type it gets expanded to a bigger piece of text. They're so easy to create that is insane. Once you learn about this, it's going to be so you're going to create so many of them very likely. So let me show you in this video, I'm going to show you two ways of creating hot strings. Later on, I will show you how to create multi-line hot strings. And then I will talk about some options. Let's go ahead and open a blank script in which I have already my directive set up. And let's go ahead and show you how to create a hot string. First of all, you just go ahead and use the colon twice to indicate that whatever comes next is a trigger. In this case, let's go ahead and use TA as trigger slash TA. And whenever I type slash TA, I want it to show a website for the automator, for example, because I don't want to be typing that very often. I have to go there very often, so I don't want to type it every single time. So to indicate that now is the expansion, I use the double colon again, and then from here on, anything I type to the right of it is literal text except for a few interesting things that we will see later on. So here, let's use the HTTPS slash slash dautomator.com. And that is going to be my expansion. So let's go ahead and run that. And let's open a new file and type slash TA. Now, triggers don't execute automatically you have to use what is called an ending character, usually by hitting tab, space, enter, or a dot, for example, it tells AutoHotKey that you finished typing your hot string and that now it has to be expanded. So let's do that. Let's press tab and you will notice that it is it just goes ahead and types the whole thing. It happens the same with the dot or again with the enter key, it just goes ahead and shows your expansion which is great because a lot of times, like my usernames, most of the time, websites that I visit very often, uh, a lot of program names that have some parameters, all of that, I just have them on hot strings so that I don't have to spend too much time fixing type typos or something like that, right? But let's go ahead and take a look at how to create uh, some things that you have to keep in mind when you create these guys. The ending characters might not be something that you want, all the time. So in the other section, I'm going to give you, there's a section in which I'm going to talk about some options that you can set to remove those things. But before I get into that, let me explain. Here on the right side is not simply literal text. There are some things that get translated. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. For example, let's say hello world. Now let's say that I want to use the word hello here, but the world part I want to put it after a tab. I could go ahead and open curly bra braces here, use the word tab and close the curly braces and then world. So instead of having hello world 
just with the space in between, I want to have a tab in between. So let's save this up, rerun it. And if I use HW, you will notice that I have hello on one side, a tab in there and world on the other. So this is something that it is amazingly useful. Um, in, in many cases, I usually use this to fill out some username and password, for example, because I put my username in one side, hit tab, and then my password, or um, which the only thing that I wouldn't recommend about that, I just do that on accounts that I don't care about the password because you don't want to save your passwords in a text file. So, uh, but if it is a, an account that I have over there that have a lot of passwords that I don't really care about, then having these fill that out for me, perfect. You could use many other keys like the enter key and some others. Uh, in the help file, you can find a list of all the keywords that you can use for keyboard keys. But not only that, in our hotkey, there's three or four modifiers like the old, the shift and control keys or the window keys as well that have special characters that trigger them. So just to illustrate this, we will talk about those characters later on in depth. But just to illustrate what happens if you're not careful with this is that um, the exclamation point is translated to an old key in auto hot key. And if you're not careful with this, what is going to happen is that once you do the, the trigger here, you will get hello world without the old key. And you have to be careful because if you put a letter right next to it, it would try to trigger some actions like Alt A might do something. If it is a hotkey, it will try to trigger it. So you have to be careful with this guy. In the section that deals with the options that we can set for the hot strings, I will talk a little bit about how we can avoid translating those guys. Let's go ahead and delete this up. And let me show you before we continue with that section, the other way of creating hot strings. These, what I'm just showing at the moment, are the static hotkeys, which means that they're read once when the script starts, but they to, to modify them or, for example, if you want to create uh, hot strings based on certain conditions, like for example, if the user has that option selected, create those hot strings, you cannot do that with this way of creating the hot strings because they are basically static read only once. But there's another way that you can create hot strings and it's using the hot strings function. So let's go ahead and do that. You just go ahead and hot string. That's the function that we're going to be using. We open a parenthesis and close it again. That's my function. And in there, I have certain parameters that I can pass. The first parameter that I'm going to pass is the hot string itself. So let's go ahead and use double colon here. I will explain later why you still need to put the double columns there. Now, hot strings, and in this case, I want to use the word new, and then a comma, and then the text that I want to expand it to. This is a new string, right? There you go. This is how you create dynamic hot strings. The reasons why they are dynamic is that as this is a function, I could put it after an if statement if option is true, right? So if option is set, for example, um, then go ahead and create the hot string. Now let's make option is set to false right now. In this case, if that variable is false, this never gets executed. And that tells me that, that tells our hotkey not to create that hot string. Now, if it is true, it goes ahead and creates it because this option is true. So this line is executed condition. These guys are not. So these are the two ways of creating hot strings. And later on, I will show you how to create multi-line hot strings and also how to deal with this translation and the ending characters, which means we're going to talk a little bit about options.